When I was 15 years old, my mom and dad were going to have a divorce. My dad was not living with us at the time. He was living in a motel. And when you get in trouble, the first thing you do is go to church. And that's what my dad did. He took that Gideon Bible that was in that motel room. He went to church three Sundays in a row. On the third Sunday, my dad received Jesus Christ as his personal savior. I didn't know what he was talking about. All I know was simply this. He came to the house the next Sunday, woke me out of a dead sleep, and said, you are going to church. We can have a knockdown, drag out fight if you want to, but you are going to church. I could see the fire in his eyes. You're looking at a fellow that was physically made to go to church, my brother and I. Sunday after Sunday, the same scenario. My dad would come to the house, wake us up, and we'd go to church. It was during that time that my dad read that Gideon Bible. He read through the New Testament three times. He got a hold of a verse, Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. He underlined that three times in his Gideon Bibles, those last three words, and thy house. My dad went to his pastor, told him the situation he was in, and asked his counsel. Pastor Goodwin said, you need to move back into the house. You got a responsibility to live for God in front of your boys. I'll never forget this as long as I live. As I look out that big bay window, I see my dad with a suitcase in one hand and the Gideon Bible in the other hand. I said, Mom, Mom, you're not going to believe this. It looks like Dad's moving back in. She quickly goes to the front of the door, and I'm right behind her. She said, what are you doing? He said, I'm moving back in. I, I talked to my pastor, and he told me that I that I have a responsibility to live for God in front of the boys. I'm moving back in. I don't want you to leave, but I'm coming in. Well, obviously that did not go over too well with my mom, believe you me. So the three of us would be going to church. My mom basically needed to get away for the weekend. So she went with her girlfriend and my mom loves to yard sale. And she bought a whole bunch of books. I mean, bags, brown paper bags full of books. And she will haul these bags into the motel room. She will spread them all out because she wanted to see what kind of bargain that she got. And then she put the books back into the brown paper bag. And she accidentally took the Gideon Bible that was in that motel room and put into that brown paper bag. Now, my mom wants you to know, I'm instructed by mama, she said she did not steal the Bible. She wants you to know that as if you're concerned about that. Now, my mom is very curious, and she felt like she was being left out. And now she has a Bible just like my dad. So she, one Sunday, said, I'm coming to church with you guys. So we were in this little country church. My dad has a Gideon Bible. My mom has a Gideon Bible. We're, we're there together as a family. I'll be honest with you. At first, I did not listen to what the preacher had to say. But then I started listening. And I realized that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. That Jesus Christ died on that cross for my sins and was buried and rose again. And I knew I needed to give my heart to Jesus. When the preacher gave the invitation, he would plead for sinners to come to Christ. I mean, I was under such Holy Ghost conviction. I mean, I could not hold on to the hymn book. I was shaking so. My other hand would be holding on to the back of the pew that was in front of me, and my knuckles would be pure white. This one Sunday, I couldn't take it anymore. I went forward to receive Jesus Christ 
as my personal savior. And right behind me was my mom and brother. I wish you could have been with me on that ride home. I'm telling you, God was in that car. Joy unspeakable and full of glory as God put our family back together. God gave me new desires. He gave me a desire as a teenage boy to read the Word of God. Never had that desire before. God gave me a desire to pray and gave me a desire. I feel comfortable now being around other Christians where that wasn't the case before. Six months after my conversion, the summer before my junior year in high school, I heard that there was such a thing as a Christian school, that you actually could have a class where they could teach you the Bible. I wanted to go to a Christian school, but the problem was in New England at that time, there was not very many Christian schools. We lived in New Hampshire, but there was one up in Maine where they had room and board. And I talked my mom and dad into, into going there. My brother went as well. So I didn't get to see my parents that much my junior and senior year in high school. My senior year in high school, I felt God had called me to preach. At the same time, God was calling my dad to preach. So we decided to go to school together. How would you like to go to school with your dad? <laughs> now, my dad is very competitive, and so am I. We're going to see who's going to get better grades. First semester, I got all A's, one C. I got a B. My dad got all A's. Next semester, I got all A's, one B. I got a B this time. Nope, he got all A's. Third semester, I got all A's, aha. Well, the truth is I could only tie him. I could never beat him because he got straight A's all the way through. Before we graduated from high, before we graduated from the Bible Institute, we started a church in Chatham, Virginia. My dad pastored that church for 19 years. He died and he went to be with the Lord. Honestly, my dad literally saw hundreds of people come to Jesus. My brother, who's a preacher, he has literally seen thousands of people come to Jesus. Then there's the little old me. I really believe with all of my heart, I don't know if it was two Gideon men, I don't know if it was a husband and wife, it may have been two Gideon ladies, but they went to room 105, put a Bible there in that motel room. I don't know, I just believe in my heart that they had a word of prayer. Lord, use this Bible. May somebody come to Jesus through this Bible. Lord, restore a family. Lord, it would be great to see hundreds and yea, even thousands of people come to Jesus through this Bible. I want to backtrack just for a second. When my dad was making us go to church, my cousin Don, she was living uh, with us. I really consider her my sister. She's a couple years older than I, and when my dad was making us go to church, she rebelled. She left. Didn't hear from her for about for a year and a half. In fact, one time I heard that she may have been in California. I don't know if that was true or not. But she finally called, and she asked my dad if she could come back home. My dad said, well, the rules haven't changed. She said, well, I expect that. Can I come home this weekend? She said, well, sure. But we're going up north to Bain to watch the kids play basketball. You're more than welcome to come. And she said, I'd like that. And so after the basketball game, it was just Don and I were walking to the dormitory. She said, Dino, is this Christianity, is it for real? I said, oh, Don, is it ever? 
I've enjoyed my walk with Jesus. I wouldn't trade this for anything. That night, my mom and dad led Don to Jesus using my mom's Gideon Bible. And my mom gave her that Bible. She went to Bible school with us for a year using the Gideon Bible. That was her Bible. And so, not that long ago, I called Don. I said, Don, I don't know where my dad's Gideon Bible is. I, I, I've seen it, I, but I, I don't know where it's at. You don't happen to have mom's Gideon Bible, do you? I would love to have it if you're not using it. And Don said, well, the truth is I led my best friend to Jesus with that Gideon Bible. I told her the history of that Bible and I gave it to her. So I said to Don, Don, could you call her, your best friend, and, and if she's not using it, I would sure love to have it. A Couple days later, Don called back and said that, uh, that her best friend had led one of her friends to Jesus and gave her that Gideon Bible. And uh, we, we've lost contact and I don't know where they're at. Isn't that awesome? The Bible says, he sendeth forth his commandment upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. So shall my words be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing sunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I thank God for my salvation. I thank God for his word, but I also thank God for you, the Gideons. I'm indebted to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.